So I want to explain to you a very important concept so we can move on and, and, and conclude. And, and again, you have to uh, pay attention because it's Hebrew words and English doesn't do justice. In, in Hebrew, there are two different words to two types of uh, uh, peace that each one means completely different. And it's a concept that is very important to know because it's very strongly related to our Torah. There's a very big difference between what's called Shalva and Menucha. Now, if I translate for you those words, they sound exactly the same. Because Shalva, the translation for Shalva is peace. The translation for Menucha is rest. Rest, relax. Some will say tranquility. So one might say, Menucha and Shalva is the same thing. Peace, tranquility, relax, rest. Shamayim v'aretz. Heaven and earth. The difference between Menucha and Shalva. And you need to know Hebrew to see the difference. And don't worry. I'll go out now to the street and catch any Israeli and ask them the difference between Shalva and Menucha. They won't answer. So don't worry, you English speakers, that you are not... Uh, in control of the language. The majority of Hebrew speaking will not know the difference between Menucha and Shalva. Let me explain to you. And this is not coming from the language of Hebrew, this is coming from our Torah. Shalva, that the English langu lang language will uh, translate as peace, which it doesn't work like that, because even for Shalva, I found a tranquility. Shalva is when a person reaches in this world to a place that everything is good. The person has a lot of money, the person has a nice house, nice car, nice wife, nice kids. Life is good. Ah, here and there are some bumps. But in Hebrew we call it mesudar. You're, you're well, you're cushioned in this world. Now when a person has a lot of money, he doesn't need to work so hard. He goes to work at 10, comes home at 12. He doesn't have to go on a bus or a train. He drives a nice BMW. He eats nice food. Vacation is first class. The house is very comfortable. And it doesn't matter right now who's that person, Jew, non-Jew, religious. It can be an ultra-Orthodox religious Jew that lives a life like that. But Shalva is when you reach to a place, everything is good. Everything is good. How many people do you know like that? I know a lot. Everything is good. A person has, you know, uh, uh, it's not only about money, all the, oh, by the way. Don't, don't, don't limit it to I have a big house and I have a lot of money. That, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Another way of this shalva is that you reach your goal. Your dream was to be a doctor and you're the number one surgeon in your field. Money is not an object. It's honor, respect, status. So take that to wherever uh, uh, you relate with and understand what's shalva. It's not only money. The easiest way to say it, that in this world, you have a physical rest. You're not running after money and dealing with it. Physically, you are relaxed. And you don't uh, have to put too much effort into anything. That's shalva. <coughs> there are a few verses that uh, explain why shalva is not something you want. And I will choose to explain one verse from the book of Mishle, chapter 1, verse 32. Remember, it's very easy to remember because Aleph is, Aleph, first chapter, Aleph is the base. And verse 32 is Lamed Bet. Lev, the heart of everything. It's, hmm? Yeah? The verse in Hebrew goes as follows. Shalvat kesilim te'abedem. Translation, even though translations are not that great. The tranquility of the fools shall cause them to perish. 
So the Torah, and there's a lot of other psukim. I chose to read you this one. The Torah is not about shalva. Where do we read recently with the word shalva? Yaakov Avinu, after Haran, after a life of dealing with Lavan in Haran, running away from Esav, having his son uh, 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 disappeared, his daughter abducted and raped. I mean, I mean, Yaakov went through hell. At the end of his life, he just wanted to, to relax and to, how do you call it? Uh, uh, retire. What does it say in the Torah? Miyad kafatzlov rogzo shel Yosef. Yaakov said, Hashem, <laughs> I'm old. I went through life. Let me just relax at the end of my life. I'm a billionaire. He was a billionaire. I have four wives. I have 12 kids. I conquered everything that I needed. I achieved. Let me rest. Right away, Yosef was abducted. And Rashi says, Ratsa, he asked for peace and quiet. You want peace and quiet? Me had kafatzel of Rogzoshel Yosef. Right away, Yosef was abducted, so now he'll be like 17 years, no peace and no rest. So Shlomo Amelech, the smartest man in history, says the tranquility of the fools shall cause them to perish. That's why the Torah does not recommend you to be in a place of shalva. And that's what most people run after. Why is that not good? Why can't I be, uh, how would you say, uh, comfortable in this world? What's wrong with that? Because this type of peace, this type of tranquility that is called shalva, you are enslaving yourself to the, materialistic, to the materialism. That's what you do. This type of shalva makes you a slave to the physicality. I... Uh, uh, how does it go? Whatever I want, I should have. That's the enslavement. That's basically the majority of people in our generation. Our very spoiled generation. Now, so what's the difference between shalva and menucha? I told you shalva. Don't run after that. We got from the Torah what's called menucha. What is Menucha? Hmm? You said Shabbat. Very good, because we call Shabbat Menucha, rest. But really, what is Menucha? What is this, I told you, peace, tranquil, uh, re relax, rest, tranquility. Menucha is that I don't want anything. That's Menucha. I don't want nothing. How are you doing? I'm good. Want to eat something? I'm fine. Want a better bed? I'm good. I am not enslaved to anything in this world. And I am not depending on anything in this world. That's menucha. Lehagia ila menucha vela nachala. That's what the Torah says. I don't want anything. More than that, nothing in this world controls me. 20 plus years ago, I found myself in a situation. I was a 27-year-old young man who didn't believe in anything but money. <clears throat> didn't believe in God. Believed in anything else that does not exist, that exists, but the real thing is nothing. And suddenly, in the middle of my life, my reality changed, you know the story, and I'm now facing a new reality that I need to serve a creator who I didn't know exists. But now I have a problem, because for 28 years I fed my body and soul junk. So when I came to the uh, time in my life that I need to make a change in my life and become a Torah observant, I told you already, and I'm here and there throwing bits and pieces, but you have to understand that when I had to make this change to become observant, first of all, 
I was 27 years old. Okay, going on 28. It's not a young person. Second of all, I led a lifestyle that wasn't so uh, easy to bridge to a life of spirituality. So I came to my tshuva with all the baggage you can just imagine. The worst of becoming observant. And one of the most dominating problem was the abuse and the addiction to almost anything that existed in the world. Drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, and all the rest of the things that I don't want to specify that it's none of your business. And I understood that if I want to serve the Creator, I cannot be addicted or limited to anything in this world but God. If I'm dependent on anything in this world, I will never be a servant of God. I cannot be addicted to cigarettes. I cannot sit during Shabbat thinking of the cigarettes. How can you observe Shabbat when in your mind you're thinking of a cigarette? No cigarettes. So I had to quit everything that exists in the world and many other addictions. Let me tell it to you the other way around. The only thing I wasn't addicted to is gambling. Okay? You use your own imagination. Baruch Hashem, somehow I didn't have that issue. I was like, I'm not going to donate my money to some pots. I am not going to sit and give all my money to some casino. That is not happening. But everything else I was addicted to. I'm talking about addictions. I'm, not, I'm talking about severe drug abuse, not smoking marijuana. That was done too. But the drug abuse was serious drugs, not marijuana. Why am I telling you all this? Because I had to make a switch in my mind that I cannot be enslaved to anything in this world. Whether it's food, drugs, anything. That's why it took me three years to make the change. I didn't go to yeshiva in the beginning. I went to yeshiva when I was 30. Forget about that. I was in a year and a half in jail. That was yeshiva, talking to the wall. But nevertheless, why am I saying that? Because I don't want shalva. Don't try to tease my eyes with that. Because that's what the world does. It teases your eyes. Here, I'll give you shalva. What was the translation? Peace. You want peace, right? Life is chaos. You need peace right now. Of course I need. I just need a moment of quiet. Most people, you won't necessarily notice it or see it or know about it. You look at their face, their faces. Hi, how are you? Great day. If you would know what's going on behind the screen, <laughs> the jungle that's in the mind, the chaos that's in the mind, if you would offer anyone one day of peace, they will jump on the opportunity, right? So Netflix offers you two hours a day of peace and you gladly take it because you just want to be disconnected and just be zombied on some screen. And then Facebook will come and send you another opportunity for peace. And the rest of the junk around you will constantly show you opportunities for peace, which you will buy in any cost. A new shirt, a new phone. Because the sales method is not that you need the shirt or the phone. You need the peace. You have to understand the marketing. You have to understand how everything is marketed for you. Why do you buy X? Because the message that is sent to you behind it. One example out of many, how do they sell uh, fragrances for men? Gorgeous naked women hugging the men. And, ah, if I spritz myself with some cologne, all the gorgeous women are just going to fall on me. That's the, the marketing tactic. 
and many other things. I'm not going to start analyzing that. You have to see, you have to, to see what is catered to you. So the world will cater for you a lot of opportunities for peace and you're going to jump on it because all you want is just a piece of quiet. Life is hectic. The day is extremely full of uh, uh, every second of phone call and this happening. You just want five minutes of quiet. And you will buy that. And the world will cater those five minutes of quiet for you. Therefore... When I'm enslaved to any type of material, I will never, ever find true peace. So Shalva is, I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable in this world. Nice house, nice car, nice wife, healthy kids, good friends around me. Okay, here and there things are not uh, perfect, but life is good. Go now to Miami. You'll see a lot of life is good. In Boca Raton and Chas Shalom, not doing any evil eye. Live your life however you want. And if God gave you a lot of money, great, enjoy it. Give a lot to charity. You can drive a Mercedes. Nothing wrong with driving a Mercedes. If you give 10 times the amount to charity first. Okay? So you want to drive a $100,000 car? Give a million dollars in charity, then buy the $100,000 car. Don't drive a $100,000 car when you don't even have that. So you leased it and you loaned it and you borrowed money from here. So everybody will see you in the BMW and that's Shalva. You want Menucha. Real rest. Whether I have the BMW or not. I'm happy either way. Menucha, the real rest, is that I don't want anything. Whatever Hashem gives me, I can live anywhere with anything. 